Uh, so if you think about all the potential worries out there, the, the, the no confidence vote that could imperil Theresa May in Britain, uh, the, the Brexit chaos that just ensues, all these protests, and now all of a sudden a terrorist attack yesterday in France, uh, Italy and its budget and things just falling apart, Germany on the verge of a recession. Add it all up and you think, well, you know, maybe we benefit by default that who want to put money over there when things are, by comparison, looking pretty good over here. Is that indeed the case? To market watchers, Jonathan Honig and Ryan Payne. Uh, Ryan, what do you think of that, that we win by default here because the comparison for your money is just favoring us? Now, I think it's relative and it's absolute, Neil. Um, you know, first off, you got to remember, we just printed a 3.5% GDP number for the last quarter. That's you know, slightly above historically um, normal. So it's actually better than what we typically see historically. And secondly, unemployment's at a half a century low. I mean, these are huge numbers. So I would say, you know, irrespective of how bad the rest of the world's doing, this is a strong economy regardless. All right. Is that and yet a further draw, though, Jonathan? What do you think? Yeah, we're, you know, the most free economies have always been the most, the strongest, the most prosperous. And what we're seeing in Europe, yes, in England, but also particularly in France, is the European entitlement state, the welfare state, really crumble right in front of our eyes. I mean, in Neil, this vote on Theresa May, look, the markets have voted, have already voted. European stocks are down anywhere between 15 and 20 percent this year. Their currencies are down precipitously. And, you know, this is exactly, this is why France has had unemployment between 10 and 60 percent for immigrants for decades, Neil. This is the entitlement state in Europe crumbling. And as long as America remains more free, it will remain more prosperous as well. Then, Ryan, how do you play it? If you there are others who argue, you know, you know, this historic bull market, I mean, I know they, that adage, they don't die of old age, but they get punctured by unseen developments. Um, could what's going on in Europe right now be, be one of those sort of black swan events that, that, that tests it? No, I think it's the opposite. I think all that is priced in. Let's face it. You know the dollar's stronger. I know the dollar's stronger. The market knows it. And that's one of the reasons why valuations overseas are so much cheaper. Mm -hmm. But I think if you look at the fundamentals, everyone's talking about Brexit, which I would argue is probably going to be a soft Brexit. But England just printed one of their fastest, uh, you know, wage growth. The wage growth was the fastest in a whole decade. Um, and they hit historically high employment. So the underlying fundamentals are actually pretty good in New York, too. And you're not hearing a lot about that. So you're looking at this, Jonathan. What would you do if you could, you know, put money anywhere? I hate to restrict it to countries, <laughs> but I mean, how would you play it? Sure. Well, I mean, you are, you're, Neil, as investors, we're looking around the globe, looking for places where there is opportunity to invest and make money. And, you know, the real opportunity is with Theresa May and Brexit. I mean, think about what Margaret Thatcher did, Neil, back in the 1970s. Britain was a wasteland. Literally, you, you wouldn't touch it as an investor. By liberalizing that economy, she was able to really put it back on its feet, set it up for great expansion. And really, the same thing was true with China. The more they freed their economy, the more prosperous it was. So I think as an investor, once again, we're looking around to those industries. And Neil, I'll just give a cannabis as an example. As <laughs> laws have loosened up in that industry, it's been a lot of money has been made. So that's, I think, what you have to look for as an investor. Where is there going to be freedom introduced? That's where you're going to make money. And at least for now, a lot of the deregulatory efforts here at home, I think to your point, have made America, ironically, a safe haven amidst very rocky international seas. So I guess you're saying smoke them or smock them if you got them, depending on how the president <laughs> writes it. Um, you know, we're getting word, guys, <laughs> Uh, that now 200 conservative lawmakers have publicly indicated they're going to support Theresa May in this uh, vote of no confidence once it begins. It technically begins here. All she needs is 100, <coughs> excuse me, 159. Um, let's say it doesn't go that way. I know it's a hypothetical, Ryan. Uh, how do you play that? Um, I think it'll just prolong things, but the reality of it is, you know, <coughs> I, 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 don't, I don't see a hard Brexit. It doesn't make sense for anyone, so I think maybe it prolongs the recovery process. But I think the bottom line is, if you look at the fundamental economy, she's not there. If she, if, if whatever happens to Brexit, if she's forced out. Exactly, because again, you know, the underlying fundamentals are strong. Again, you're seeing good employment numbers because the economy is actually very strong there, you know, above and beyond the headlines. And I think that as a buyer, that's what you want to look at because valuations are much cheaper abroad than they are here. And the upside potential is very good, Neil. Are you guys looking at commodity activity, though? I noticed with even the hint that the Chinese are going to be back buying soybeans and soybean prices ticked up, yeah. not dramatically, uh, but corn and wheat, there are less buyers there, but they're ticking up as well. 
that we could have a commodity pickup. We could have, we've already seen interest rates move up a little bit. Ryan, do you first on that? And Jonathan, your thoughts on that, Ryan? <laughs> yeah, I think it all plays into the same thing. I think with China now negotiating, that really opens up the whole world to growth here. And that means commodities should do well, also, which have done very poorly. So I say as a buying opportunity, I definitely like commodities here as well, Neil. Uh, John, and, and Neil, I was briefly, I mean, I was delighted in see, Neil to see you actually qu quoting soybean and wheat prices. <laughs> in fact, everyday investors can participate in these. You always want to do your own due diligence, but there are ETFs now, Neil, like WEAT -E or corn or SOYB. These all track these in individual markets. And I think even for everyday investors, if you already have Apple, if you already have the S&P, adding some commodities, I think, can provide some diversification and also some good upside return right now. All I know is that wheat trades like an internet stock. I mean, that thing's up 21 <laughs> yeah. or so percent this year, yeah. or something like that. Um, Ryan, what do you tell just individual investors who see this crazy whip sawing? Obviously, they prefer it when the, when we have advances like this than some of the roller coaster days like, that have preceded it. But but what do you tell them? A lot of young people, in particular, come up to me and say, "I, I don't want to be part of that. It's just too weird." What do you what do you tell them? You know, especially for young people, I think, look, you're in the wealth creation stage. That means you're putting money into your 401k. You're building wealth right now. You want a down market to buy. You know, prices globally are on sale right now, Neil. In fact, 90% of assets around the world in dollar terms are in a negative territory. It's the first time in 100 years. So you got the whole world on sale. And if you're in the wealth creation stage, you've got, like, the best opportunity ever to be adding to the global markets, not just the U.S. And I think that's the smart play here when you're thinking about what's going to do over the next five to ten years. If you've got to be if you have that long time, allocated. if you have that long time horizon, I, I have to say, I'll take the other side of that trade. I fear and I feel as we're probably in the type of environment, let's say from 2000 to 2010, where maybe if even if markets don't plummet, we remain in a trading range for quite some time. I don't know. When you get to I be my age, guys, uh, long term is lunch tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> but I want to thank you both. Uh, have a wonderful holiday. Very good having the both of you. Uh